<laughs> yes. Hi, everyone. Jeez. Hi, I'm Molly Wood. Welcome to Make Me huh. Smart, the podcast where we make today make sense. Oh, man. And like we're doing it while we're sweating, the by the way. The There's show. a heat wave. God, just... yes. There's a heat wave in Oakland. Oh. There's a heat wave in LA. It's just hot in the shed. It's hot in Molly's garage. It's just hot. October in California um, is just yeah. summer. Yeah. Happy October. Yeah. Uh, made it through September. Happy October. I know. Third, the fourth quarter has started. Um, I'm Kyle Rizal. Happy Hour Friday. Um, Economics on Tap is how we have branded this, although I don't think we really did brand it. Live streams up and running, of course. Um, thank you to everybody wherever you're finding us. Podcast, YouTube live stream. It's also, uh, I, I'm pretty sure we got Discord. Are you monitoring Discord? Because I'm not. Oh, yeah. It's hopping in the Discord okay. like it always is. This is like okay. hot Tober, says Nichelle in Savannah. That's hot awesome. Tober. That's right. October. That's exactly what it is. That's pretty good. Yes. Also what's what's really funny is everybody's fire October. Everybody's chiming in with their weather updates. It's really funny. Seventy three in Idaho. I love it too. Seventy three in Sunny Idaho. Cool wow. In Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Pleasant wow. in Seattle, anyway. like it always is. Twenty four hours of fall in Cleveland. Hmm. Oh. Wow. Delightful. Uh, it's Tequila Friday for me. Oh, good. 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 Yep. Good. Good. I'm uh, I'm doing my juicy expat from. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, I love those glasses. Those are cool. Uh, here's my beer can. Mm. I'm so boring. My beer can. Not the ones. The cool on my part face, about this is actual. that it's a it's it's <laughs> a um, uh, it's a local woman-owned brewery, Three Weavers. So I, I like to support them because they're good. Oh yeah, you've name. had that before because yeah. I remember thinking yeah. like that's so yeah. awesome and really it's a good, good. name, yep. Three Weavers. Yeah. Yep. Yes. It's a really good name. Hmm. <sighs> all right so yes we have some so drinks that, we have some news we yep. have some half full half empty uh there are lots <sighs> of good drinks raspberry bubbly it's 89 and sunsetty in orlando and megan shaw is having the last glass of a prosecco bottle <laughs> get it girl <laughs> Ooh, chennai <gasps> india 85 degrees chennai, India. Sentil kanan from chennai man do i want to go to india holy cow that's amazing i really would also, oh, uh, Hawaii audience. Aloha, You're it is not a haircut. I just washed my hair today. I just washed my hair. There was no haircut happening. Oh, yeah. Mine always looks dramatically different when that happens, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Shall uh, we? Shall right. we news it up? Yes. Let's. Uh, Let's okay, I'll go first because the, the first one's a quickie. The second one takes a little bit of explaining. So uh, the governor of California, uh, Gavin Newsom, said today that um, there's going to be a vaccine mandate for K through 12 school kids as soon as next fall. That is a big, big, big deal. It's a really big deal. Um, he, he's inviting all kinds of political fighting. And I can just tell you from my little town here in Southern California, there's going to be a lot of political fighting. But uh, Newsom's, Newsom's taking it on the chin and he's running with it. Now, I will say he's yeah. not going to mandate teachers or staff. But if you're a kid in California, you want to go to public schools next fall. K through 12, got to get your shots. Kind of wild. Love it. Kind of wild. Bring it on. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Keep it coming. Yeah. Yep. Speak, P.S. Mandate students or mandate teachers and staff too. <laughs> Districts are doing that, like yeah. district by district, but yeah. 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 Uh, so that's a relatively straight ahead one. The the one that takes a little more um, explaining is that um, – uh, senior Biden aides, this is from the Washington Post, Seton Biden aides, senior Biden aides privately explored whether payments could continue even if the U.S. breached the debt ceiling. So I have two things I want to point out about this. Number one, <clears throat> October the 18th is the day when Janet Yellen says we will hit the debt limit and she will not be able to borrow more money to pay bills we have already accrued. But if she wanted to, she could keep paying interest on the bonds. She could pay the coupon, coupons on the bonds and just keep our credit rating and our, our status as a, a reliable lender intact. But she would have to not pay other things like Social Security, like the military, all that jazz. We talked about that. Um, mm -hmm. So October the 18th is the date. The really great part of this story is that they also explored the idea of mint the coin. Now, for those who might not be familiar with mint the coin, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been a thing for a number of years, but in recent uh, debt ceiling crises, specifically 2013, it got really hot and heavy. And the idea is this, the treasury department is authorized by statute to print commemorative coins. And so what the mint the coin thing is all about is that the treasury department without needing any authorization from Congress could, could print a commemorative platinum coin and value it at a trillion dollars. It then takes that coin and what? puts it Seriously? on. Uh, yeah, yes, yes. 
Yes, the statute says that, that Yellen can do this. I, I will say that Janet Yellen has said, I'm not doing that, that stupid shut up in much more diplomatic language. But okay. they, the point is that the White House is, has looked into this. So they could, the Treasury sec Secretary could print a, a, or mint rather, a coin, value it at a trillion dollars, put it on deposit at the Federal Reserve, and then Jay Powell, using his magic Fed chairman keyboard, can create a trillion dollars of money, put it in the White House's account, and we could keep paying our bills. I love it so much. It's never going to happen, but I love it so much. Wow. And I love that the White House, I love that the White House was asking people about it. What's amazing too yeah. is that uh, our Discord, which of course is like right on it, is all of course. about it. There's yeah. just like immediately yeah. hashtag yeah. Mythicoin. Everybody's like, oh yeah, hashtag Mythicoin, Mythicoin, Mythicoin. Yeah. Um, all right, wait. Wow, that's so let me just, I heard. just some, yeah, some, sorry, some comments in, uh -huh. in the YouTube here. Wouldn't yeah. that be uh, inflationary? It would not because it's not actually new money. It's just an asset swap. You take the trillion dollar coin and you get the trillion dollars in money. It's an asset swap straight up. Just saying. Okay, anyway, go ahead. I want to do it. I, th I, I think that's oh, fascinating. Uh, that's too. so funny because I had just heard on the morning report today, actually, the, the interview where they were like, oh yeah, last time this happened, they explored the idea of the Fed buying the debt to get us out of oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Chris Lowe. That was a great interview, actually, that David that did with Chris Lowe. It was a great interview. Yeah. It was so interesting. And it was yeah. like, oh, yeah, he, you know, they talked about it and they were like, yeah, he's like, yep. you know, the bed was like, yeah, I could probably it's buy a, the debt, but you can't tell plan. anyone. Don't tell anybody. That's yeah, exactly what we're thinking. work of a secret thing. plan. That's exactly right. And then like, now that it's not a secret plan, it couldn't work. Right. Which is also right. fascinating. You'd have to admit it, the coin is dead, but also the fact that we're having this conversation is ridiculous. I know. But the crazy part is that it was only a secret. It only works if it's a secret plan because Congress can't find out about it. That's the that's the subtext, right? If Congress finds out that the Fed can bail out the Congress yet again on the economy, then it's useless because Congress just goes haywire, right? Oh Congress God. is like, oh yeah, the Fed's going to save us. This is yeah, absurd. craziness. Um, that was if a great you did not all see Kai Rizdal on Don Lemon on oh, CNN stop. last night. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to like brag about you or tell everybody except like totally go look it up. But I really appreciate it because it is so tempting to sort of like make it politics and make it all beltway. And I really appreciated the fact yeah. that you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is not a get the Republicans are not playing a game here. They are not playing politics. Yeah. They've made it very, very clear that they will let this happen. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, crap, yeah. Kai, you're right. And you were like, uh-huh. And that was great. That was a great moment. So, so you know, it's interesting. I uh, uh, never mind. That's a story for another time. I'll save it. I'll save it. You sure? I mean, Seriously, we're like I'm drinking not... and reflecting now. Well, we got nothing but right. time. So look, so, 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 so here's what happened on, on marketplace this afternoon. So the last question on marketplace. So on Friday afternoons, we do the wrap. It's six and a half, seven minutes of, of live radio. Today was Heather Long uh, from the Washington Post and Sudi Bredi. And my last question was to Heather about the debt limit. And I said, come on, seriously? And she gave a really, as Heather always does, a really thoughtful and considered answer and ended with, of course, the Republicans in Congress, specifically the Senate, won't go along with that. And, and if you listen, I, maybe, maybe they tightened up in post, but in real time, there was like a four second lag, which is a long time when you're sitting there on live radio. I was out of time, right? I, we had gone eight minutes in the wrap, which is already a minute over. Mm -hmm. And and I was I was about this close to coming out with some really snarky comment about Mitch McConnell, which would have been really not great for us as a journalistic enterprise. And so what I came out with was, yeah, Republicans in Congress, enough has been said about them. And then so I've been thinking about it all afternoon, right? I mean, so it's 340 now in the afternoon LA time. I got off the air an hour ago. And and it's weird because I um I've pointed out every single day this week that it's the Republicans in the Senate who are not doing the bipartisan thing and raising the debt limit and alleviating all the potential chaos. But at the same time, I'm like, why is it not okay for me to say on the air, Mitch McConnell is the one who's doing the damage. And I've mm -hmm. just, I've been wrestling with that. That's that, you know, and we've had conversations, you and I, about what do you do when one party is not operating in good faith and the other party is trying to uphold the norms? We've, we've had those conversations and I just, it's, yeah. I've been grinding on that, you know? Well, look, it yeah. comes down to journalism. What is it like you shouldn't, if it's yeah. raining, you don't ask five people if it's raining, you open that's the window a, and you look and see if it's raining exactly and then right. you come back inside and you're like, it's raining. Like they're the right. only ones who have right. ever messed with the debt limit. And they're, you know, and Heather yeah. Cox Richardson, my 
favorite, the only newsletter that I pay for. I pay, don't, yeah. you know, don't at me. Oh, I do pay you? for, wow. for every you. form of freaking media. Yeah. She just happens to be the only newsletter that I pay for, but set, had a, a whole piece about, where was I going with that? The debt limit. And oh, that also <laughs> in this case, playing around with the debt limit, as in refusing to uh, hold a vote on it and making sure that Democrats, if they want to do it alone, have to do it as part of the reconciliation package, right. which as you pointed right. out, right. is they're a hundred percent serious about. There is not a situation in which the Republicans yeah. are gonna be like, now nah, we change our mind, we'll vote for it, don't worry. That forcing Democrats to include it in the reconciliation package has the added benefit of making sure that they can't hold and whip votes on the voting rights bill before the midterms huh? because it takes so much time yeah huh? which again it's raining people no one's yeah. peeing on your foot yeah <laughs> oh, it's raining okay so that's a segue mm-hmm. it's like my favorite it's like my favorite yeah speaking of yes. peeing on your foot no wait i'm not going to speak about that again <laughs> i <laughs> there's been a lot <laughs> there's been a lot of talk recently uh about decentralized finance and like who are the banks in the future and it's really been interesting to watch a firm which was founded by one of the former paypal founders max levchin Mm -hmm. start to try to become this like do it all finance app because like in china they have uh alipay like wechat is this sort of do it all finance app you can like do your banking you can get a loan we could until you know the chinese government cracked down and um you can take out credit and you can do all these things and trade stocks and everything and so Google had been apparently trying to get into this game. What I find interesting about it is how many people, how many companies are like, oh yeah, I totally want to be a bank. Walmart, Amazon, Google was going to mm-hmm. offer mm-hmm. bank accounts that would tie into the Google Pay digital wallet and you could get these checking accounts and you get debit cards and like do the whole thing with Google. And as of today, I know this seems like a random story given everything that's going on, but I just thought it was interesting that Google was like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to try to become a bigger name in finance. We're not going to offer checking accounts, probably because uh, regulators were like, yeah, there's like a lot of stuff that you can stick your fingers in, but finance is not that thing. Yeah. And why buy trouble, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I mean, great that Silicon Valley buys itself a bunch of trouble, but why buy more? And that is, there are, look, there are few, there are like tech has been allowed to run free as we know in a million different ways. There's hardly any yeah. regulation in that industry to speak of. And the healthcare, yeah. I would argue, and finance are the only two issues where they have just like sort of consistently run mm-hmm. aground. And so yeah. Amazon, this Wall Street Journal points out, has never moved forward with, forward with its checking account proposal. Facebook tabled its crypto push for now. And you're just now seeing Google be like, yeah, okay, fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. You have rules and we don't want to play here. <laughs> yeah. Which I think yep, is totally. very, very interesting. Um, And then I know that I made, well, mm, mm, mm. okay, before we get to half, uh, half full, half empty, <laughs> I just want to play this really, I'm sorry. It was so freaking delightful. And they pulled the audio I, I, I and I can't the decision do it. process there that was audible. Hmm, 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 Real time. I was okay. like, it's 343. What should I do? I think you guys are really going to appreciate it. We, we got time. It's Friday. Um, Imaginary friend of the show, because we've never actually had him on. Rex Chapman tweeted yeah. today that it was 50 years ago today that Disney World opened. And what I did not know is that when Disney World opened 50 years ago, it was like the coolest, most arguably culturally subversive thing that ever happened. Roll the tape. Wow. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. great. This is, you can't see it, but this is a wow. super multicultural cast of dancers 50 years ago. That is amazing balls. And a zippity doo dah rendition that includes scatting and full on interpretive dance. It, it's just, it was like, I, I know that we don't have Make Me Smiles That's on Friday, great. but I was like, I'm not leaving that one until That's, Monday. Yeah, That's the greatest not? thing I've ever seen. Yeah. Don't leave yep. any of it. Scatting. That's great. Scatting and interpretive dance awesome. at Disney World 50 years ago. Uh, all right, should we play a game? Now right. that we're all in a Let good us. mood. Please. 
I'm regretting right now not bringing another beer into the shed. I would just like to say that. Okay, this is half full, half empty. Uh, our predictions on various topics. Yeah, I know, but I don't need another beer. Um, Liana Squalache is doing the honors today. What have you for us, Ms. Squalache? Well, you guys really took the wind out of my sails with that trillion dollar coin thing because that was topic oh. number one. And now we're oh, you got to no. adapt, sister. Right Come on, on you got to you got to so, roll. Right, let's yeah. go with it. Figure Next it topic, topic number two: <laughs> FAA planning to reduce taxiing time. Half full, half empty. I mean, um, hope springs yeah, eternal because so that is ridiculous. There but you go. I think it's going to happen. Hollywood has spoken. So I, was it was it MMR this morning or was it was it on the BBC? There's 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 some proposal to get planes to the runway faster. The catch, of course, is that uh, airport operations for all the time that it seems like are sitting around doing nothing. They're really quite efficient and it would only like reduce carbon emissions by some infinitesimal amount. But look, anything we do, uh, I think I'm in favor of that. So half full. Yeah, I'm half full. I mean, and not just yeah. because I complain about how long it takes, but because it would be apparently a pretty significant impact. Yeah. Seven million yeah. gallons of fuel and the elimination yeah. of more than 75,000 tons of carbon dioxide. So yeah, whatever you got to do to do that, half full, all the way full. There you go. Boom. Boom. Done. Rock it. All right. Are you half full or half empty on congestion pricing for drivers? So they're talking about this in New York City. It's a big deal in London. I think there is definitely a thing. In, there's definitely congestion pricing in Italy because I got nailed. We rented a car when we went to Italy because my oldest son was studying in Bologna for uh, a semester. And we went at Thanksgiving and I got nailed for violating by like a millimeter over the freaking line into the congestion zone. Two $600 tickets. I bleep you not. What? $600? Yeah, crazy. Yes, yes. They are not screwing around. And of course, you know, so we had a rental car and the note comes from the rental car and we're going to pay it, but we're going to charge you 14% and this and that. And oh yeah. And then I had to get money orders and transferred into euros. And yeah, it was a mess. Anyway, provided it is well adjudicated, really which in my story. experience, it has not been. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Anyway, so I'm, I'm half full for, for a lot of reasons, but mostly because there's too many cars on the road. I'm half full. Yep. There are too many yeah. cars on the road. And look, I mean, it, it goes along in line with like a carbon tax. Like if you want to yep. change behavior, yep. you have to create both incentives and sometimes disincentives. And this is definitely right. Exactly. In the latter. Exactly. Camp. And I'm into it. Yep. yep. Bring it on. Yep. Are you half full or half empty on the Macy's versus Amazon billboard debacle? Oh I am unaware. I, I, okay. So this is an amazing story. <laughs> Amazon wants to buy a billboard that sits on top of the Macy's, oh, the historic yeah. Macy's building in yeah. New York City. Yeah. And Macy's has filed yeah. a lawsuit to stop this. And they're like, we would suffer reputational harm. And this is like horrible. Basically, they're just like, you cannot do that. You are like our number one competitor. You're already putting us out of business. Hell no, you cannot have a billboard on top of our brick and mortar building. <laughs> and then all these people are like, this shows that Amazon needs to get into brick and mortar. And I'm like, this kind of just shows that Amazon are dicks. Like, I don't actually mm -hmm. think that there's a lot of business yeah. going on here, except for like, we will, we will crush you. I, I mean, I don't yeah. even know which part I could be half full or half empty on. I'm half full on the hilarity of the story. Yeah, that, that <laughs> I'm, I'm going with that. I'm half full on the, on the. Of it, yeah. Oh, can I do that on yeah. video? I guess I can. I just did it. <laughs> I just said that. Sorry. I just said the D. I just said the D word. So we're yeah, off right? the rails. You we're getting, we're getting that e on today. this podcast. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Do you remember we when we started e. this podcast and every everybody was all uptight about guys getting the E? And I'm like, well, whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Hilarious. Yeah. yeah. The the chat room is basically with me and just the fact that Amazon is trying and what a what just a like power move let's say that is we're kind of yeah. half full on the like wow the sheer wow yeah mm -hmm. yep next oh okay i'll tell you okay. sorry wait hang on your your fan is getting so much love in the youtube chat can i just tell you oh it is somehow my so yeah. my sister-in-law gave this to me and apparently i've just had it sitting here on the desk and only at this exact moment did i realize like well this is useful and has an actual job i have a pretty little yeah. paper fan at my desk there you go and it's yeah. working and it's working because so it's hot up there. That's all. That's all we're saying. All right. What do we got? We got one. We got one more. Yeah, last one. And there's a little bit of context for you on this one. Um, okay. So a Dutch supermarket chain says it will introduce 200 chat registers in its stores to help combat loneliness, especially in the country's elderly population. Half full or half empty on chat registers? 
You know, so, so look, number one, this is an extremely serious topic, right? Because lonely old people is a big, big deal of which my mother is one. I don't know that she would stand there and, and talk to a, I don't even know if it's a person or a bot or what, but, but, um, perhaps this could be technology solving a very human problem. I don't even know. I mean, that's why so much robot development started in Japan is because they had such an aging population. They were like, we're going to be a caretaker and also company that actually has, you know, like that's driven a lot. This question has driven a lot of robot development. I think it's freaking tragic that this is the place we're in, even in like socialist companies that come countries that are supposed to be taking good care of their people. Like you still have people who are so lonely that they want to go talk to robots at grocery stores. That is freaking yeah. heartbreaking. I'm half full. You know what? I'm yeah. just going to do like a politician and change the topic. I'm half full on awesome communal living <laughs> when you're old. Boom. How about that? Answer the that question coming. you want to answer, not the one you were Plot asked. Twist. That's what I'm saying. There you <laughs> I go. I guess I'm half Love full. Love you though we do, Leon Yeah. Huh. There we go. That's awful. Is that it? That's awful. Because we stole your first one? That's it. No, that's they didn't give All me right. any other information for you. <laughs> Well, you know, you got to be able to handle it. Well, then we love it. That's all I'm saying. Shows up. There we go. Exactly. Why don't the old people hang out together? Communal living, says Bob Stance a lot. A whole different deal. All right. Uh, I believe that means we are done for today. If you see it, make me smile, would you, out there in the wild? Or if you want to share something that made you smile, send it to us. Because honestly, sometimes Molly and I just don't have it. Sometimes we just don't got it. Um, You know, send it to us. You and sometimes you're funnier, honestly. You're funny. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 that too. There's that. Too. <laughs> Let's be honest. You're hilarious. <laughs> so yes, send us the make me smiles. Send any questions or answers to the make me smart question, which once again is what is something you thought you knew and you later found out you were wrong about. Make me smart at marketplace.org. We accept all kinds of communications, emails, voice memos, beer. You can call us 508-827-6278, which is 508 508- U B S M A R T uh, smart. There was a point where I used to get beer in the mail at marketplace. They would just like randomly show up. Like, I, know, oh, I shouldn't right. say that because okay. it's going to make That's it all. worse. Make me I smart know, is produced right? by the absolutely wonderful Marky <clears throat> green, who is learning to do this job and has been a killer producer on the, yeah. how we survive podcast Into the deep next end. week. Today's episode is engineered by Charlton Thorpe. Half full, half empty was hosted by Liana Squalachi. The senior producer is Donna Tam. The team behind our YouTube live stream and our game, Half Full, Half Empty, is Stephen Beyond, Catherine Devine, Emily McCune, and Mel Rosenberg. Note to Bridget Bodner, should you be listening, we can take the pronouncers out of those names now, by the way. The theme music for Half Full, Half Empty was written by one Drew Jostad, the executive director of On Demand. This is Tarnieves. This is beautiful. This is just a beautiful little fade it's, out. It's that was, that, that was a good little thing. That was a good little so thing. Great. 23 minutes God, and I boom. never think of the fan before. It's so, oh. so I mean I can l- love you though I do. You're you're fairly glistening in the heat up there. That's, a, that's I'm all like I'm saying. sweating. I'm schwitzing. <laughs> yeah. It's disgusting. Right. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh. All right, all my right. friends. I have to go get my flu happy? shot. Slash horrified. Yeah. Oh good. I'm glad to hear it.